Bear down, Chicago Bears. Guys, I want to say something right away. There is no way that I will tell the Chicago Bears what to do. It doesn't matter if I have the right decision, the wrong decision, or an indifferent decision. Uh, I'm not going to be the one that makes a decision. The only person that's going to make these decisions right now, Ryan Poles, Kevin Warren, Matt Eves about what happened. One of the big questions, however, has been, and we're going to go back in time just a little bit, Tony Dungy made some comments back in October, and his comment, we're going to read that comment, I'm going to show you the comment, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of a breakdown here. We're going to decide, or at least we should be able to decide at this point, is Justin Fields that guy? And by that guy, I do mean QB1 for the Chicago Bears. Now, before we get started, guys, if you like this content, please make sure that you hit that like button, the subscribe button, the bell to be notified of future content. It would help me if you leave a comment down below. But in the rush to 1,000 subscribers, I'm trying to get there. So anybody who subscribes certainly is helping out this channel tremendously. So we're going to break this down first. <clears throat> Do you believe in him, Justin Fields? Is he our guy? And if he is, then I don't care who that next quarterback is. But if he's not, then we have to take a look at him, Caleb Williams. So that gives us the question where we felt pretty good about Justin Fields. We felt pretty good about what was going on going into this season. And then the wheels kind of came off at the beginning of this. We, we really didn't see all of the pieces come into play and into place uh, at this point. What we saw was a team that didn't look ready to compete. And that, by the way, I do want to stress for the record here, uh, that's coaching. That's you being ready for the game. We're all professionals. Everybody in the NFL is a professional. The point is the, the professionals being led by coaches who get them ready, they perform better than the professionals don't have that same support system. So uh, the Bears did an injustice, I think, to the entire team by not having people ready to compete at the beginning of the season. But um, now let's look at what happened here. Um, Justin Fields had appeared in 15 and 10 games previously, 13 games in this past season. His passing attempts were career high, 370. His completion percentage of 61.4 was a career high. His passing yards were a career high. Uh, his passing touchdowns were not a career high, but it almost tied at 16 versus 17 and 7. And then his interceptions were a career low. So we've seen progress. We haven't seen tremendous progress. It should be pointed out that if you're looking for, uh, you know, that, 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 that just breakout sort of level, you didn't really see that. You saw flashes of it, but you didn't really see that. Now, let's take a little bit further. In 2023, Fields threw 370 times a total greater than his previous two seasons. Uh, this means the Bears threw the ball more than they had before, but not very much. We should at least acknowledge that. Uh, in turn, Fields threw for the most passing yards and, for, and fewest interceptions. But that's only part of the equation. Since his numbers have mostly improved, does that mean Fields is the guy? The data gives only an empirical look at Fields. Uh, so let's look at a little bit further. After returning to action, Fields threw five touchdowns and only three picks to close out the 2023 season. The Bears won four of their last seven games, and Fields' command of the offense appears to be at an all-time high. Droves of fans at Soldier Field chanted, we want Justin, after the Bears blew out the Atlanta Falcons in Week 17, making it clear they wanted continuity. Uh, but does this also mean that Justin Fields is the guy? Now, there's a debate. Obviously, a lot of us are having that debate, and we're looking at, at stats, and we're looking at data like this. If the Bears build around Fields by utilizing the 2024 draft and free agency, the team could do could be much better next season. Dungy's question, however, might not have been answered clearly, but it certainly isn't a foregone conclusion that Justin Fields isn't the guy. So now we have to ask the question, is Justin Fields that guy? It is my belief that there are not many the guys in the NFL. When we look around the league at one point, Aaron Rodgers certainly. Patrick Mahomes certainly is. Um, struggling, however. Jack Prescott, we thought was, but the Dallas Cowboys can't seem to get out of their own way when it matters. Uh, you know, we think of a few of these guys out there. Josh Allen comes to mind. We're starting to see development from Justin Herbert. We saw it out of Matthew Stafford, but Matthew Stafford barely had a winning team at any point. So, you know, we look around the league and is he that guy for the Chicago Bears? And I want to posit this and say, 
I think that he is. And I think that it should be recognized and that we should at least agree that Justin Field represents everything that is Chicago football. He represents that hard edge, run first mentality, game management, let the defense win the ball game for you, come through at the end. Now, in the advanced statistics, I'm going to point this out. Uh, Justin Fields has a passer rating of about 112 in the first quarter, 91 in the second quarter, 89 in the third quarter, and only 58 passer rating in the fourth quarter. I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that that was more a testament to Luke Getze's play calling and the uh, conservative run the ball and just try to burn the clock up instead of having what I would call a killer instinct. Now, if that is the case, then we underserved Justin Fields. However, it is Justin Fields' responsibility to execute that offense to the best of his ability. And when I say that, I think it should be noted that there were a lot of fumbles and a lot of interceptions in the fourth quarter. Now, uh, we can look at that and we can say, well, there's a lot of pressure on a, on a quarterback in that fourth quarter if you are leading and giving up a lead to try to scrape something back. So uh, play calling does come into play, but that's not the only thing. There has to be player accountability. So there's a complicated question that we have to ask. And I, again, I'm going to go with the answer being we want Justin uh, we want Justin, as they said, on the field that day. But I'm very curious to see what you think, because Justin Fields, uh, if we just and, and I want to I want to say this, if we could agree that Luke Getze did a fine job of scripting the beginning of each game and that made that made him look good and that Luke Getze was very poor at adapting his game plan to opposing defenses after that first set of scripted plays. When the defense adapts, the Bears don't adapt. And that seems to be what he did. If we can take that as our litmus test right there and say that that is part of the reason, but not all of the reason. And I'm going to point this out because when you script those plays, you don't script them for the second half. So the Bears came out in the second half and looked good. 89.4 quarterback rating in the third quarter for Justin Fields but only 58% in the uh, 58 uh, quarterback rating in the fourth quarter. So guys, be objective about this. I like Justin Fields. I would like to see Justin Fields continue here, but we do have to recognize there might be a question here that we're not going to be able to answer. The only person or people who are going to be able to answer that, it's going to be Kevin Warren, Ryan Poles, and Matt Eberflus. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. And bear down, Chicago Bears.